How's it going, everyone? ND Sean 45 coming at you. Uh, yeah, um, this game tonight, not exactly the kind of performance I expected out of the Irish. Um, we got off to a slow start in this one, which pretty much turned out to be the whole story of the first half with us. Um, you know, Purdue had us on the ropes early. Um, at one point, we were down 14 to 10 to them. But at the same time, I can't really be too critical about this game because we got the win. We got the W, and at the end of the day, that's all that matters is winning the game. Um, but, you know, not trying to be completely negative here, there were a lot of good things that I saw tonight, too. Um, you know, basically what did us in in that first half was just, uh, you know, a few mental mistakes and a few penalties. Uh, had the one turnover. But, you know, something, the, the big positive that I saw out of this game tonight was the maturity of, of, of us as a football team. Um, you know, when we got down 14 to 10, this team could have easily hit the panic button and started worrying like, oh, no, what are we going to do? That didn't happen. They they kept their cool. They uh, and they regained their composure. And, you know, the rest the rest of the game spoke for itself. I mean, we held Purdue to a big fat goose egg in the second half. So um, we, and once we started rolling, it just, you know, it got it got much better. But like I said, not trying to be completely down here. I mean, I would be lying if I said that there weren't things that we could have done differently tonight, and there's definitely room for improvement on this young season. But, you know, again, you, you can't really complain because we got the win 30-14. to 14. Um, I mean, no, it's uh, not a, a 40 or 50-point blowout like, you know, the haters expect us to have every single time. And I'm sure we're probably going to hear that now. Oh, you got off to a slow start against a team like Purdue, and, uh, you know, you were supposed to beat them by uh, – by 28, 30 points, whatever the spread was for this one. And I'm sure that's because of that alone, they're probably going to call us a bad football team. But you know how I feel about Notre Dame haters. They're very irrational, and they um, they uh, let their judgment get clouded so easily. But you know what? Aside from that, um, you know, I'm not going to waste too much time talking about them. But, um, you know, uh, Coach Kelly said uh, in his post-game press conference, um, at least on the radio he did anyway, I haven't, I haven't seen uh, uh, the other one, but um, he talked ab about this team uh, facing adversity, and that he's right. That's exactly what we got tonight. And honestly, I even alluded to this a little bit in my preview, you know, talking about the, the past few years, how the Boilermakers have given us a little bit of a little bit of trouble. Um, I can't really say that I was surprised to – see that tonight because as I mentioned this is the last time until the year 2022 that we play these guys so you knew they were they were probably most likely going to bring a little something extra for this one and want to try to you know pull off the upset here and uh, get bragging rights for until 2022 um, so that's exactly what happened they got off to a fast start caught us off guard a little bit but we were able to maintain our composure not hit the panic button and get things flowing um, and, uh, you know, as, as coach Kelly said, you know, their adversity is to, is to be expected this season with, you know, everything else we've had going on. And so we got a, we got our first, uh, our first test of that tonight. Um, but you know, something, as I said already, um, it doesn't matter because we came out of there with the win. Um, and I, in my opinion, I think it was a very convincing win, you know, based on everything that we've, you know, how, everything we've been dealing with and, you know, uh, Purdue uh, bringing a little something extra. So, um, I as a fan, I was satisfied. But of course, you know, always things that you you know your team can do better at, and the Irish here are no different. Uh, but looking at the positives here, um, now I don't have an exact numbers uh, here in front of me. I haven't had had a chance to look at them yet. I just kind of jumped into this video because uh, I have a long day tomorrow, and I just wanted to get it done. Um, but Everett Golson, he had another solid performance. Um, you know, made a made a few off throws and got sacked a couple times. But you know, some mistakes are going to happen. But he had a couple of nice passing touchdowns. Um, ran for another. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, putting up some putting up some stats and uh, making a very early case for the Heisman Trophy. But hey, nine games to play. Way way too early to still be talking about that. Um, but uh, just a little something to keep in mind. Um, you know, the, our running back core, uh, they, I, th I thought they did much better over last week against Michigan. Um, you know, again, I don't have their numbers in front of me, but just, you know, by what I saw on the field, they were doing much better. 
Uh, but of course, you know, I think they're capable, they're capable of doing even better than what they did tonight. And, um, but you know, Hey, we still got nine games to play a lot of, a lot of time to turn that around. Um, but overall, you know, it was, it was a great performance. So the defense stepped up in the second half, made some big plays. Um, uh, Joe Schmidt had a nice interception, uh, backup cornerback, Will, uh, uh, Devin Butler, excuse me, almost, almost said Will Fuller. Um, but Devin Butler had a nice interception, uh, cause you knew once he came into the game, they were going to go after him. Uh, so he, uh, was up to the challenge and overall as a team, we did a great job stepping up, stepping up to the challenge, uh, that Purdue threw at us. So, uh, we recovered really nicely from it, from the slow start. Um, and uh, one thing I do have to mention while it's on the top of my mind, and I said the same thing after the, the loss to Pittsburgh last season when uh, Stefan Tuitt was uh, ejected from the game for targeting. Same thing tonight. Um, our starting safety, Max Redfield, he got ejected for the game from the game for, uh, for targeting. And, you know, I'm not gonna, trying to use this video as an advocacy to, you know, talk down on, on targeting or anything like that. But I just think the whole, well, in my opinion, I know there's nothing I can do about it. No fan can. Um, but in my opinion, I think the whole penalty is stupid. Um, you know, I, I guess as a sign of compromise, I'd be fine if they, uh, you know, just called a 15-yard penalty. Um, but I think it's really completely asinine that they throw guys out, that they eject, that they kick guys out of the game for it. The guy is trying to make a play, okay? You know he's he's moving fast all across all all over the field. Um, momentum carries a lot of these guys. They're just trying to make plays. They're not trying to hurt anybody. Now look, I understand completely with the way football is going right now, where all the NFL, college, high school, all the way down the line to Pee Wee, they're trying to protect players from head injuries um, and things like that. I I get that. I understand and. I can't say it enough times. I sympathize with the guys at whatever level they play it at. Any former player that is suffering from like dementia, amnesia, any kind of head injury, whatever, I sympathize with them. But at the same time, you can't ignore the fact that this is a contact sport. Anyone who's played the game uh, at any level, you know what you're getting yourself into when you sign up to play. It's a contact sport you risk an injury every time you step out on that field. Not saying I don't sympathize with these guys, but that is a fact you can't ignore either. And, you know, to throw guys out of the game all because they're trying to play football, trying to make a stop on defense, that's absurd. I mean, you want to, again, you want to throw the flag for a 15-yard penalty, fine. I'm able to compromise on that as a fan. But to kick guys out when all they're trying to do is make a play, it's stupid. And I really would wish that the NFL and college football, that they would, you know, think this through before they make these stupid uh, rule changes. Um, so, uh, but again, I've gone on long enough about that. That's just my opinion on it. But overall, tonight was a great win for the Irish. Um, they didn't let those uh, those things hurt them. They kept their cool, and they didn't hit the panic button. And getting the win is all that matters. But um, so with that said, guys, uh, next week is a, a bye week for the Irish. So you won't really see me unless uh, news breaks with the, uh, the whole academic situation going on. Um, and the bye week comes at a good time because we uh, lost a couple guys to injury, uh, and, um, Amir Carlisle and uh, Nikki Barati. So, uh, you know, the first quarter of the season is officially done. And to be 3-0, and it's great. It's really great. Uh, we're starting to see uh, Brian Kelly and Brian Van Gorder's plan unfold, and it's uh, I like what I'm seeing so far. So with that said, guys, as usual, this is ND Sean 45 signing off. I will see you guys in a couple weeks for my preview for the game against Syracuse. So until then, y'all keep it real. And as always, go Irish, baby. We finally made it into the top ten.